Hi, welcome to the A Face for Radio video series. I'm Sarah LaDuke. This is WAMC's Instagram live arts interview series I'm doing from home, from my guest room slash office, makeshift office, as we um, stay home. And uh, I just realized that I need to plug my headphones in. I'm sorry for the noise that this is probably making, but if I want to be able to hear, the room is less echoey if I'm on my mic here. So welcome. Um, I am, uh, this is my first show in a bunch of days. I'm very, very excited to be about to speak with Elizabeth Stanley, Broadway performer. She's just this wonderful person. She's an associate artist at Barrington Stage Company in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. I've been lucky enough to meet her a few times when Barrington Stage musical casts, of which she has been a member, have come over to the Linda, WMC's Performing Arts Studio, to record an interview and take a few songs with me. She came over for Kiss Me Kate. She came over for On the Town with her very talented castmates who went on to Broadway. And uh, and for most recently, if, I, if my chronology is correct for Ragtime. Um, she's a wonderful, wonderful, you're all gonna, I mean, a lot of you watching probably already know her and are like, oh yeah, bring her on, who the hell are you, Sarah? But uh, if you don't know her, you're gonna love her. She's absolutely marvelous. Before I welcome her to a Face for Radio video series, I want to promote that this week, tomorrow, I will be speaking with singer-songwriter and multi-instrumentalist Marco Relli. On Thursday, I'm going to speak with Jennifer Trainer thompson of Hancock Shaker Village, and she's going to walk around the farm at Hancock Shaker Village, and we're going to talk to some baby animals, as well as talking with Jennifer about what's going on over there. And then on Friday, I'm going to speak with electro-comic music mix master McQueen. McQueen Adams is going to come on, and he's going to talk to me and do some uh, bleeps and bloops with various synths, and it should be should be pretty rad. should be pretty fun for a Friday. But first, the inaugural show of the week. Sorry about my finger there. A conversation with the absolutely stunning and sweet as heck elizabeth i am welcoming now waiting for elizabeth connecting hi <laughs> it's so hi. good to see you why am i blocking my camera so much today okay hi 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 how are you hi, <laughs> hi. So great to see you it's i'm so so happy to see you congratulations on your engagement thank you Congratulations on your Drama Desk Award nomination for Jacket Little Pill. Thank you. It was such and, a crazy surprise. <laughs> and like, did you find, you found out, the, the nominations came out after we were all staying home, right? So you found out. Yeah, I just assumed like all of, you know, any award season for the arts was just going to be postponed. So I was like really surprised because I didn't think it was happening like at all. Mm -hmm. um, and my manager and like called me and I was like, oh, what a, what a day brightener. <laughs> so, but tell me about where you are and how, how you're living. How are you handling this and where are you located? Um, my fiance and I were able to escape New York City and we're in Maryland. Okay. Um, yeah, his family has a place here. So that's where we are. And it's, um, it's such a blessing to be here because, you know, New York, it's, I feel, I just like feel for the strength of you know, the hardiness of New Yorkers, the people who are sticking it out. Cause I think it's, it's hard no matter where you are, but I think like in any like densely populated place, it's hard when you can't even go outside and be alone, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It looks like you have like quite a good amount of space to hang out in there. You're not too, too tight. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's going to be hard to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Elizabeth, I just realized, I don't know this. Where are you from originally? Um, I'm from Illinois originally, okay. from like a tiny town. Um, so I'm used to wide open spaces um, and I quite like them. <laughs> yeah, certainly. So you were in Jagged Little Pill when you were actively performing on Broadway as the pandemic hit and Broadway closed. And I'm, I'm sure you've talked about it a lot over the last number of weeks, but could you tell, tell me about it? What was that like to, <laughs> to be in a show, to be working on Broadway and then have this unprecedented thing happen? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think I'm I'm still kind of processing it, but I feel like I've I've come to a peaceful place about it, um, at least for today. But sure. no, I think I think it's here to stay. But um, yeah, you know, it was it was shocking, and of course there was a lot of like chatter in the lead up to it, like as we were reading the news and starting to you know have a lot of questions, like should we still be performing? What's going on? The audiences were getting smaller, but they seemed like they were really people who wanted to be there, so they were also like great audiences. Um, and I think like, 
you know, when they made the call, I sort of naively thought, well, we'll be closed for a couple of weeks. And I was surprised even when they were like, it's, it's going to be a month. I was like, well, that seems extreme. Yeah. Um, and now I'm like, oh, that was really naive. Um, well, we just, I mean, nobody's ever been through this before. We, yeah. we don't know what we're doing. Yeah. Um, but it was, I mean, it's a strange thing to process because I think as, as artists, like, you know, it's not unusual to have spells of time where you're unemployed or you're doing, you know, your sort of side hustle in between. Um, but those you can usually like predict and see them coming and prepare and save accordingly and all the things. So it definitely was a shock in, in a number of ways, you know, in addition to it being, you know, Jagged Little Pill is like a, a new show of the season. So right. like the spring is like, I feel like you're building, building, building momentum for like all the other shows we're about to open, all the spring shows that are about to open and then mm -hmm. launches into Tony season and the summertime, which are, you know, really, really exciting times. So it felt like, the pedal was like all the way down and then the emergency break got pulled. Yeah, which is a dangerous feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, the first couple weeks, I um, I was kind of sad, but also like enjoying having a bit of a rest. Sure. To be um, and then the reality kind of just started to set in of like, well, this is probably gonna be a while, which maybe even a little more sad, but also just like, okay, like I think, just the acceptance of this is what it is. And then how do I, how do I use my time is kind of where I'm at now. And how have you been using your time? Good question. Um, <laughs> or, or, <laughs> lose, or losing your time as it may be. I feel like I'm very busy, like very active. I'm working full time from home for the radio station, but then like time is so odd that it's like dragging in, and snapping like a rubber band also like I can't believe it's May I've been home since since Broadway closed like that same time as when they, they sent home some of our staff it's crazy so what are you doing yeah it's weird I mean I think like the days feel like they're going quickly it's it's really it's it's a I like your rubber band analogy that's so <laughs> um thank you Right now, I'm like really into music again. Like for a while, I kind of like stepped away and I just was enjoying like a break from it. But now I'm kind of like singing and putting together little concerts. I really want to record an album. So I'm in the like process of like, what does that look like? What's what do I have to say? What song should be on it? You know, who can do my arrangements? Who, who might have time during this time that might not otherwise have time? Right. Um, so that's been kind of fun. And also, and so consequently, I'm also like trying to learn GarageBand and just some like technical things. I've been indulging. Well, it feels indulgent, but it's kind of, I don't know, it's creative. Like I've been doing more like tech creative things. So just even like different apps and photo editing things, like that's been a fun sort of, because it takes me a long time to do them because I'm just old enough that they're not like, <laughs> no, it's not like they're just- I do know. I know what you mean. Um, yeah, so that's been kind of fun. You're also, I know from, from us being friends on Instagram, you're a visual artist, you paint sometimes and, and do stuff like that. Are you able to to do that, to create art that way? Yes, yeah. I've been doing um, some watercolor. I just did a bunch of, um, a big batch of Mother's Day cards for oh, cool. on my life. Um, and I've been doing some tie dye for fun that I've been like ordered on, you know, from people online. Um, I'm knitting. Yeah, there've been a number of like handicrafts, but I have um, seen like, I feel like I have a couple of visions of things I want to paint for my apartment. My fiance and I just moved in together. Mm -hmm. And so I haven't started them yet. There's something that's like keeping me from like being like, just dive in. And I think when I do, it'll be really fun. But um, it's also a little hard when I'm not in my own house because I don't want to make a mess in someone else's house. Sure. Well, get, just, get, just make a mess and clean it up. Yeah, well, it's just like I gotta wait for the weather to just be like that much nicer, and then I can sure. get outside. Sure, sure. Um, so you moved in together in a different apartment in New York than where you were. Did you move into his, or did you guys get a new apartment? I moved into his, um, and so that was like another part of like this pandemic. I feel like that's been like we literally just moved in together. Like my lease is up April first, so we like actually like right after Broadway shut down, we rented a U-Haul and like moved or I made her my things. Um, 
yeah, so I feel like we're like living together, you know, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. we're in it. Um, but it's actually, I mean, it was, there was a steep learning curve, but it's actually been like wonderful. And it's, I've been slowly kind of like moving in over the course of a couple months prior to that. Um, so it'll be kind of fun. I think whenever we do return to our, our little New York nest, um, to, to have time up. to really set it up and make it home. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And is it, a, is it a good location that you're going to dig living? Yeah, you know, it's a change for me because I've been living in a very, like, big for New York standards, like, specious apartment in Queens for mm -hmm. almost the entire time that I've lived in New York. Uh, so it was, like, a, a sad thing for me in this pandemic, too. I had planned to have, like, a farewell party to the place because sure. so many friends have stayed with me there because it was a two-bedroom. And... And I just, you know, I was single for a long time. And so it's like a very sacred place to me. Um, yes. Yeah. So I was, I'm kind of sad. I didn't really get a goodbye to the place. Um, yeah. in a couple months. But um, Charlie's apartment is on the Upper West Side. So even though it is much smaller, it's like a neighborhood I've always dreamed of living in. And yeah, very cool. Very, very cool. So, you know, I'll manage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, plus your apartment, speaking of it being sacred, I mean, it's absolutely full of plants. And like you had it set, you just set up so, so nicely so to build, <laughs> carve out those spaces in the smaller place at Charlie's house. Yeah. Well, your house, your apartment, it's yours, um, not you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you keeping in touch with your show family, with the Jagged Little Pill folks? Is yeah. that how that works? <laughs> um, yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like, I feel it it's like any other sort of friend group in that I feel like there are individual people that I text with that I, that I, you know, feel really close to or that I'm thinking of that day. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have a group thread. Um, I'll send Marco Polos to a couple of them. And then our producers have set up um, like a Friday night happy hour zoom. So, so like everyone can kind of check in and, and that's great. Cause there'll be like, you know, the sound designer and the oh, cool. and you know, like it's not just cast. Um, the stage manager and so it, that's kind of kind of great and you know I don't know how long that'll go on <laughs> because we might be out this for a while but it's it's nice to feel like there's some sort of togetherness yeah absolutely no we my my husband's work did a, a zoom happy hour maybe the second or third week of it and he was like the office is doing a zoom happy hour so cool and we got on it on our deck and then the next week he was like they're, they're doing it again. They expect us to socialize again. Like, we don't socialize this much when we're not at home. What's going on? And I was like, well, you don't have to go. You could RSVP. Sorry, I'm busy right. doing what? You'll have to make, be, just be on another Zoom, I guess. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a different call. <laughs> you know, we've done, like, uh, Charlie and I have done Zoom gaming with a couple of his friends. Have you done how that? Did, no, we haven't tried games yet. I keep thinking about how to make it work. How did you make it work? Well, uh... So we did Jackbox, which I don't know. Okay. Like that, I've heard of it, but I don't know how it works yet. Yeah. With his family, which is a little trickier because like you have to show someone has to ha have the camera on their TV screen, but really successfully on our phones, we did with some friends of his in Pittsburgh, um, code names. Have you heard of that? Game? I love that game. I love that game. We a do friend, too. a friend of mine has it. And whenever we're like, let's do a game night, I'm like, code names, code names, we're playing code names, can we play code names? Is it code names or we're playing code names? Because <laughs> <laughs> if so, I'm in. Yeah. Um, no, but it works really well. I think if you just Google it, you'll be able to find it because it's just like all the clues just come to your phone and you can see the whole, it, it works. You'll love it. Great. I highly recommend. Code names. I don't need to write it down. I was almost going to like You're make like, a note. Oh, like, like, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, too, because you know, I feel like the Zooms are like, they're great, but like eventually it all dissolves into like everyone talking about their fears of what's going to happen in the world. You know, I yeah. mean, like, point is like inevitable. And so it's nice to like have something else to also talk about in the meeting. Definitely, definitely. Well, I do, I've been doing, um, I talk to my niece a lot and that's fun because she does, she does call this the sickness and keeps saying, um, after the sickness, I'll come to your house. And that's a little, I'm like, yes, yeah, after the sickness, a little creepy, um, but justifiably creepy. Like she's not wrong. But then she also just mostly, yeah, she mostly just wants to talk about normal, well, sort of normal kids stuff that's happening with her. And then I also do, I do like um, FaceTime play dates with my friends' kids because they're like, you know, losing they can tell mind. me they're losing their minds and I love them very much. And they're, they miss school 
yeah. and they want to talk about it, but it's not, they have like, their concerns are so different from all of the adult concerns that even though it's still concerning, it's a new conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's, it's interesting to talk to kids in this moment. Like, yeah. how are they perceiving it? And what is yeah. it like to them? It's like, well, it's very, yeah, it's very weird for them to see and they don't necessarily even process that they're seeing, they're seeing everybody they know go through something that they've never gone through before. You know, right. like every, you know, summer we're like, when I was a kid, I did this. And now it's like, well, what did you do when you were a kid during quarantine? Like, I d <laughs> wasn't, I didn't, I did, we didn't have nothing. It. Sorry guys. Sorry about your time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. I love this wall behind you. Oh, thank you. It's our, it's the, um, the accent wall in the guest room that my husband and I, designed and painted oh I don't know it's just triangles lots of colorful triangles thank you thank oh, you very much to execute it was I mean I couldn't I always I say this about most of our house projects Paul could probably do it I couldn't do it without Paul he could probably do it without me but I am <laughs> helpful <laughs> um, because the planning stuff is just taping like taping one color out and letting it dry completely and then yep. doing another coat and then when with the right you know tape and patience yeah it wasn't too hard it wasn't too hard we, I mean we did it we don't have like it's pretty fun and I like yeah picking the colors was a bomb was a bomb because it's like we're not renting you know we we have a mortgage we own this house so we Rats. have just gone thank you <laughs> I've gone like not I wouldn't say nuts because I think it's still pretty tasteful because the other rooms are the other walls are plain so there's like one kind of crazy wall in each room and then <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for appreciating it. I'm not over it. We finished it just before, just before we had to stay home. And then for the first couple of weeks of this, I worked in our dining room, which is also a very nice room. And then I kept walking by this room going like, oh, it's a shame we can't have any guests and nobody gets to spend time in this beautiful room we made. And I was like, wait a minute. I'm, me? I can. I can do it. You're like, have lots of guests. <laughs> yeah. Just like this. <laughs> Virtually. Um, so you mentioned working on music. Um, do you, do you, play piano or something to accompany yourself? Do you sing along with recordings? How do you do that while you're home? Yeah, I do. I play the piano. Um, and so that's been nice to kind of like be dusting that off too. I mean, um, it reminds me so much of like growing up where I spent hours at the piano and then also hours singing. Um, but part of that would be like learning the accompaniment to whatever it was that I wanted to sing well enough mm -hmm. so that I could, like play along with myself. Sure. And now I'm a little bit lazier where I'm just like sort of like mittens my way through something as I'm singing to like, you know, just have something to sing with. Um, but it's been nice to like take the time to like really like learn it correctly and then add in the singing. It's like all the, you know, the slow steps, but it's been kind of good. When did you begin taking music lessons? Um, I started piano when I was six. Okay. And then... Uh, took all the way through my sophomore year of college. So at one point in time, I was not too shabby. Um, yeah, that's a lot of years of studying and started early enough that your brain was still very absorbent. <laughs> I mean, it's so true. Because now when I try and pick up a new instrument, I'm like, ah, this is hard. <laughs> yeah. oh, like, oh, gosh, I wish I would have learned, you know, 10 instruments as a kid. But I'm happy to have learned one for sure. When you started piano lessons, did you want to, or was it a, a family mandate? No, I really wanted to. I okay. was like really super excited to do it. And then of course I started and I was like, uh, practicing. And like, I, I didn't want to learn like the names of the notes and some of that sort of technical boring stuff. I just wanted to play. Mm -hmm. um, but it worked out for us that like, let's see, I guess when I was 10, so I, 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 for four years, I studied with the same teacher. And then when I was 10, we moved. And my new piano teacher was, like, really intimidating. He was, like, this sort of tall, scary-looking, but actually very sweet guy. Mm -hmm. um, and he started giving me music that was also, like, just more of a challenge. And so then I was, like, hooked because I, I was, like, I'm playing this. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I say that, like, I don't know, like, who knows what would have happened if we hadn't moved, I might have gotten bored, or I might have not stuck it out, but I'm, I'm so glad that we did. Remind me what instrument you played in company. In company, I played the oboe, the tuba, and 
the sacks. That's right. And did you did you have to learn those for that, or did you have some familiarity with them before that production? I played them already. I okay. learned. Um, I learned them. The oboe was like my high school instrument, my you know my band instrument, and then I really wanted to be in marching band, and so double reeds don't march. Um, oh, that's like I don't know. That's that should be a T-shirt. Is that a T-shirt that like band people wear? <laughs> double reeds don't march. That's very fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> it be. Yeah. But yeah, it was so, um, you know, I was like, well, what instruments do you need so I could be in marching band and no one else wanted to like carry a heavy tuba in parades. And so I did. Cool. No, that's great. I love that. Yeah. And it also was like one of the easiest instruments to play. Like you just have to be able to like breathe hard. Um, and so that I could do. <laughs> <laughs> So I played those already. And then the saxophone was something that they added in. Like when we did the show out of town, the three girlfriends did not play instruments to drive a person crazy. They just sang. Okay. Um, and Sondheim was sort of like, and the staging of it was very sort of literal. Like we were talking to Bobby. Um, and so that was one of his, like, he's like, I miss that it originally was like the sort of like Andrew sisters, like girl trio. Mm -hmm. And so us playing sax was the solution to that. It's pretty fun. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are an associate artist for Barrington Stage Company in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. I've seen you there a number of times. That's how we've met. And I, so I thank them eternally for bringing you into my life. Um, no, thank you. Um, what, does that, what does that mean to be an associate artist for them? How does that happen? And what does it mean to you, to you, for you? Uh, I mean, I was so thrilled and so honored uh, because it, to me, it feels like what I've always dreamed of, which is like having a sort of theatrical home, um, you know, a place where your creativity and whatever, in whatever form you have to offer it is, is sort of revered and um, just that there's a, there's a place for it, I guess. Um, and so what sort of technically what it means is that like in this moment, like Julie reached out, Julie Boyd, the artistic director reached out to the associate artist and said, I'm collecting ideas of like, how do we use this time? Or, you know, what should we do to move forward? Um, and so it was kind of fun to be on the email thread. And I, I have to confess, I did not have anything to offer at the time. I was still dealing with like, oh my gosh, my show just closed. Like we're moving to Maryland for, temp you know, temporarily. Like yeah. I was, um, not much help, but it was still really inspiring and um, nice to be included in that. Sure. And it's also, it's also like, you know, I have a small dream of being a part of like a, a rep company someday. Um, and it, it feels like sort of the next best thing to that. And so other associate artists, Mark Jold and Deborah Joe were up. I saw you on a video with them. <laughs> They, I don't remember, I can't remember the exact title of the series they're doing, but it's like Barrington Stage from Home or something very similar yeah. to that. It's on YouTube. Yeah. Was it fun to, to see them and talk to those guys? Oh my God, the best. They were just hilarious and, and so sweet. And, you know, it was really nice because Mark Dold was also doing The Inheritance. And so, yes, it was. you know, it was, it was actually like the first time I've gotten to speak with someone else who was in a Broadway show that closed at this time. Um, and so sadly for them, like they were already that to permanently close um and so didn't actually know that when they gave their last performance it was their last performance yeah uh, but you know he said it, it, it was actually okay and um yeah it was, it was just i don't know it was nice to connect with him yeah he's so fun he's really really great and you he you got your on that video you your fiance popped in to say hello charlie oh. popped in to say hello and then and then mark's husband was right on the couch by him and i i keep telling paul i'm like People will like it if you pop in and say hi sometime. And he's like, I don't want to be on it. And I'm like, just get her. I was like, people, I was like, people like you. Like you're you're great. And they they know. And he's like, No, I'm not gonna do it. He's like, if you have technical problems, I'll come in. I was like, I'm not going to have technical problems. And then one time I did, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, no, I love seeing him when he pops up your your Instagram. He's he's just a delight. A damn delight. I'm very lucky. He's lucky yeah, too, but we're all that. lucky. Yeah. How did you guys meet? Can you talk about it on the Of course. Oh, sure. We met through mutual friends. Um, my friend, well, okay, so the woman who had my job at WMC before me, Jen Nathan, I met her through work. Her husband, now husband, Rich, 
grew up with Pat and Nicole, <laughs> who are now like my closest friends, the parents of my of my two Charlotte and Evie, the like girls I post all the time, like I love them so 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 much. Um, and Pat, the father of that family, used to work with Paul. So one time years and years ago, not years and years, years plural, but not years and not decades. Um, we yeah. were out for Nicole's birthday and Pat was like, my friend Paul that I used to work with um, lives near here. I'm gonna call him and see if he wants to text him and see if he wants to come out too. And he came out and we just started talking about movies and stuff. And then for five or six years became closer and closer friends, but really that like that long. Cause he's so, he's so sincerely nice in a way that was like, un, like unpenetrable, for, impenetrable for me. Like I was like, this is just the nicest person. So like, he's so sweet that he's so sweet to everybody that I can't see a difference in how he treats me versus anybody else. He's just so, so good. Um, yeah. Raised for well, really just super dude. And then my, one of my birthdays, he gave me a lino cut um, piece of art that he made. It was a giraffe, which is my favorite animal, wearing um, headphones. And my friend Jessie, who I grew up with, was at my birthday party that year. And she was like, that, that guy's in love with you. And I was like, no, he's just so nice. You don't, like, I, I hear you, but he's just so, so sweet. Like, you don't know. And then a few months later, he was like, so I like you. And like, could we try dating? And I was like, yeah, that sounds all right. Let's try it. Let's try it out. Like, very pragmatic and producerly about it. Uh, but then it was like off to the races from there. He's the, he's the best, the best, the best. I mean, I'm sure Charlie's the best for, for you, but Paul is the best for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then our friend, we got married at Mass Mocha and our friend Pat, who introduced us, officiated and the girls were our flower girls and Nicole did a reading and it was just like, really good, really, really good stuff. Oh, I yeah. love that. And so did you have wedding planning in the, yeah, so great. Um, did you have wedding planning in the works that you had to just like throw away or were you not really working on it yet because you're in a show? No, we were like on it. Like, because he was kind of like, I don't want to be engaged for years and years. Like, let's get married. And so I was like, great. Um, and I was, I guess I feel like I've seen enough friends get married. That I was like, I don't want to look at, you know, 25 venues. If I see a place I like and they're available, like, let's just go for it. So we had like, already we already had like the date we already have the venue we already have uh. all like sort of locked in um so I, I don't know what's gonna happen i think I, we're supposed to get married in september and i think we'll probably end up postponing but um mm -hmm. the venue is being flexible about like offering estates in 2021 um okay. so i think we'll probably just like push it you know push it back a year um we'll see when, when they are letting us wait until June to like really decide, make a decision. So hopefully we'll just have enough more information by them that we can really just feel like we're making the right choice. It's so hard. <laughs> it's I, really, so, I can't I, imagine. I cannot I, imagine. Anyone who's planning anything in this moment that has, you know, especially like it's one thing to just look out for yourself and like do what you think feels okay for you. But you know, like a wedding or something, like when you're calling other people together. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Harder. But it'll be okay. Like, yeah. you know, that was like one more thing that I was like, man, yeah. 2020 was such a fun year. And now. <laughs> well, at but... least there's murder hornets. Mm. <laughs> What's the actual? I know. I know. Um, do you mind if I ask what day in September it was going to be? No, not at all. The twenty seventh. Okay, because we're we're September, but we're the third. The third. Oh, yeah. Because um. <laughs> like because it's Labor Day weekend, it's like just get that built in extra day off. But then every yeah, then everybody when you have your anniversary, it's like everyone's also everyone else's anniversary if you pick Columbus Day weekend or Labor Day weekend or Memorial Day weekend. Because let's everybody has the same idea because it works. It works. I mean, it does. It does. Yeah. So. Stay tuned. Maybe we'll try that in 2021. <laughs> yeah, no, you, I mean, you will. You will. It'll be good. It'll be good. It'll be, I mean, it's going to be beautiful, whatever it is. And it's, you're going to get married in New York? Question mark? Uh, upstate. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, in the Catskills. Yeah. 
we can't, I can't even tell me, just message me later what the venue is in case I, because I'm curious, but we don't need to tell people the date and venue on this live thing that anybody can see. The crash your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, I want to ask you one more thing okay. before I say goodbye for now, at least for this public chat, and then we can start connecting behind the scenes all the time. For enforcing, forcing closer friendship on like a third of the people I do this program with. <laughs> like, and then we'll have a cocktail and then, uh, um, what, what are you watching or reading or listening to that you want to recommend to people if you can think of anything? Uh, well, my fiance and I have been binging The West Wing. It's just, okay. so, and he's watched it, I think three times all the way through, uh, which is like a serious commitment. Um, and I haven't ever seen it really. And so it's like his dream that he's like, I really want to share it with you. So we've been doing that. And of course we did the Tiger King, you know. Right, we um, did too. I was, and I was like, I resisted. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to. It's like, I don't want to. And then every joke for a week was about it. And I was like, well, I have to understand jokes online or what am I even doing? So I watched it. What am I living otherwise? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then I've, um, I really dig, I don't know if you've been listening to The Spark File. Is that on your radar? It's a no. Pod so it's uh, Susan Blackwell and Laura Camion. And it's like, they're just such cool gals. And, you know, they kind of are friends and have a great rapport. But it's all about things that they find creatively interesting. And so it's like, they, they're sort of like, we're offering this up to you. You might also find it interesting. If you're a creative person, maybe it'll spark you to write a play about it or paint a picture or do whatever. So it's just this sort of like collection of curiosities, which is kind of fun. That sounds great. Yeah. I don't want to say goodbye, but we'll, oh. say, we'll say see you later. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate your time and, and you energy and everything. It's really great to spend time with you, even virtually. Yeah. So, so, so good to see you always. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> This is Elizabeth Stanley. I'm Sarah LaDuke. This is the A Face for Radio video series. And tomorrow I'm going to speak with Mark Arelli, who's a singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist and music producer. And I'm on my wrong document. Click, scroll. On Thursday, I'm going to speak with uh, Jennifer Trainer thompson of Hancock Shaker Village. And she's going to take us around the farm and we're going to see some baby animals. And then... On Friday, I'm going to speak with Electrocomic Mix Master McQueen, McQueen Adams, and that should be pretty fun too. Elizabeth is on multiple cast recordings. She's on the, the company cast recording, the John Doyle company. She did um, Merrily at City Center Encores. Merrily, we roll along with Lynn Manuel Miranda and Colin O'Donnell if you want to hear her perform. I mean, it can't be beat. She's just absolutely fantastic. Um, and I'm so honored and humbled that she did my little, my little Instagram show here for WAMC. She's, she's an absolute dream. And uh, her Instagram is beautiful, too, if you want to follow her. I mean, she, she doesn't need me to plug it, but if you want to follow her account, it's, it's really um, a very, very beautiful follow. Thank you all for tuning in. If you are looking for more serious programming pertaining to the state of the region and the state of the world, my colleagues are working extremely hard back at the newsroom and all over the region. And their fine work is, of course, on the radio, on all WAMC frequencies, and it is online at WAMC.org. WAMC.org. We are also in the run-up to a fun drive that won't happen. If you'd like to donate, WAMC.org is a place to do that as well, to support the station. If you are able, if it was within your means, we, we thank you. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Tomorrow I'll be here with Mark Arelli. I'm Sarah LaDuke. Thank you for being here and stay safe in there.